Thank you. Maybe the most important reason we came here tonight is not to receive this honor, uh, but to honor those who have worked so hard for this band to help it function, to help it grow, to help it flourish. All of us could fill sheets of paper with the many names and of our loving family members, our oldest and dearest friends, our influences, our idols, our collaborators, our counselors, our contributors, the people who mediated for us, who lobbied for us, who assisted us in countless ways. Those who fought for us, carried us, disagreed with us, gave us perspective, encouraged us, gave us shoulders to lean on and cry on. They've done boring paperwork, endless organizing, agonizing phone calls, computer work, torturous flights, drives, terrible conditions. They've hung lighting rigs and wound countless cables purchased thousands of tambourines, changed tens of thousands of batteries, and even vacuumed our brooms, all to keep this band moving along, sometimes only inching forward. To all these people, we give our most sincere and deepest thanks. Your hard work and love and dedication means that this award is as much for you as it is for us. You make us feel like we're one big happy jamly. In no particular order, we give our sincerest thanks to George, Carrie, Liz, Simon, Kelly Curtis, our manager, Josh, Neil, Donnie, Nicole, Kevin, Brett, Jimmy Schof, Jimmy V, Andy, Sarah, Dicko, Dave Rat, Pete, Sonny, Larry, Jesse, Keeley, Blue, Dan, Tommy, Peter, Nelly, Glenn, Gary, Carol, Goldie, Michael Goldstone, Michelle Anthony, Keith Wismar, Eric, Anna, Elliot, Brendan O'Brien, our longtime producer, Mark Smith, thank you so much, Tim B, Tim P, Rob, Ryan, Adrian, Gavin, Will, Karen, Jess, Christian, Siggy, Jamie, Betsy Lee, Dana, Raven, Scully, Jeff O, The Glue, Schnapp, Jacqueline, Harvey, Lance, Rod, Don, Diana, Dan, Tom Conklin, Stranger, Brian, Doyle, Radar, Davey, Lampy, Josh, Marty, Barry, Kobe, Brad, and Regan. And further, and further, all the incredible artists who have created what might be one of our most enduring artifacts, all of our incredible tour posters. But even more important than all of those wonderful folks, we want to thank our fans and our fan club. whose belief in us carried us through the times where we didn't believe, or we lost hope, or we lost the plot, or we lost each other. Thank you so much to the greater Pearl Jam community, whose fierce autonomy and evolving manifestation is still a source of amazement and wonder to us all. Keep doing what you're doing. We're having so much fun watching you. And lastly, I want to thank our amazing wives, my amazing wife, Vivian, her beautiful family, our beautiful children, Viv, Marlo, and Faye, my mom and dad, my sisters, and their families. Thank you all for giving us this opportunity and this honor. I'd like to thank the Hall of Fame for including me with this amazing band, and Pearl Jam saved my life. And to the Jamily, and to my family, my kids, I love you guys, thank you. Hello, hello. Um, thank you all for being here tonight. We're very honored to, to be here as well. Uh, I would just like to thank my, my muse, my girl, my one special lady, April Cameron, Cameron, excuse me. Uh, our beautiful children, Raymond and Josie. Uh, I would like to thank my parents for uh, turning me on to uh, 
Count Basie um, and um, for letting me practice drums in their house for probably a decade or so. I really appreciate that. Uh, my brother and sister for taking, to, taking me to my first concert, uh, David Bowie, Station to Station, 1977. Life-changing experience. Um, I would like to thank my brothers in Pearl Jam for inviting me into their incredible family, their incredible band in 1998. Uh, my brothers in Soundgarden for inviting me into their band in 1986. And it's been said uh, before, but we, we so appreciate the fans and the, the life's blood that you give to our art form, rock and roll. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you very much. Whew. That feels good. Um, there are pivotal moments in life that change you forever. I've had many of these, but the first was in 1976. I was a Boy Scout one day, 11 years old, when my friends Danny and Rick told me about the rock band Kiss. I asked my parents for a guitar that night. I want to thank my mom, Louise McCready, for her love and support for teaching me about Warhol and the Rolling Stones and dyeing my hair. My dad, Roy McCready, thank you for giving me the love and guidance and teaching me to train my mind, body, and spirit. Thank you to my first band, Shadow, and the Friel family for letting us practice Shadow for five days a week for six years in their house. Thank you so much. To my second band, Pearl Jam, you're my brothers. I love you, I love you guys, I love your families. My dear friend Duff McKagan told me, one time, you guys did it right, but we're only as good as the people that are around us. Our manager, Kelly Curtis, Michelle Anthony, Michael Goldstone, Nicole Vandenberg, George Webb, Donnie Spada, Chris Adams, Brendan O'Brien, and everyone at our offices, and our fan club, our road crew, and every person that holds us up so we can do what we love. I want to thank the Red Hot Chili Peppers for taking us out in the beginning and treating us totally right. There have been many bands that have inspired me. Many that inspired me, including Cheap Trick, Queen, Bowie, Hendrix, The Stones, Beatles, UFO, Kraftwerk, Ramones, Brandy Carlisle, Slater Kinney, The Kills, Social Distortion, Muddy Waters, Sex Pistols, The Clash, and my new favorite band, Thunder Pussy, and also The Stereo Embers. To name a few of my friends and family, a lot of you that came tonight and some were unable to make it. I bring, you bring me laughter and teach me how to live. I love all of you. All of my friends and family that are here tonight, and all of our fans, thank you for hanging out with us for so long. Oh, and finally, to my amazing wife, Ashley, who keeps it all together, keeps my world together. I love you, 143, and our kids, Kaya, Jackson, and Henry. You inspire me to be a better parent, and I love you. All right, thank you. When I was 12 or 13, my Uncle Pat gave me some singles, of which one was The Kink's Well-Respected Man. Uh, this coincided with reading Death of a Salesman in Mr. B's seventh grade class. After that, I was put on a course to never be Willie Loman or the unhappy suit Ray Davies wrote about, which somehow parlayed into a lifetime of playing in bands. So if I seem a little bit nervous, blame Ray and Arthur Miller, as I've never been very comfortable in a room full of suits. In, in 1983, I moved to Seattle looking for my tribe. Other artists, musicians, individuals, hard workers, skateboarders, kids that spoke about the politics of Joe Strummer, Jello Biafra, and Dave Dichter, and artists like Francis Bacon and Basquiat and Pettibone. I found a lot of these folks. Many are still my friends. I, I met Stone. Uh, within a month of moving to Seattle. At those first Seattle punk rock shows I went to almost 35 years ago, which ultimately led me to our band and our community. Being here with the band, who have become some of my best friends in the process, making music and art, traveling the world, supporting causes and programs together, making small differences, meeting great artists and creative minds all over the world. That's a pretty great fucking life. It, 
It's an honor and mind-boggling to be a part of a club that includes so many of our heroes. Neil, the class, Zeppelin, the Stooges, Cheap Trick. But the fact is that we were affected and infected by bands that aren't here. So many important bands that made us want to pick up our guitars and write songs. Roxy Music, The Jam, Devo, X, Black Flag, Dead Kennedys, Jane's Addiction, so many others, all worthy. But the very best part about tonight is that my mom, who gave me the keys to the piano and the arts, and my dad, who taught me about hard work and community, they're here with my family. And as Dave said earlier, only they know how far it is from Big Sandy, Montana to the Barclay Center. So this is for every small town kid who has a dream. That's to everybody. Thanks to everybody who supports us and inspires us, our great friends, everybody who works with us with the band. Kelly and George have been with us for 27 years, 26 years. Uh, but especially Pandora, who puts up with my consistent inconsistency every day. Thank you. I love, love you. Very kind, thank you so much. Um, I'd just like to start by thanking all those who, who came before us. Um, the, the Trilobites, the Tetrapods, the Primates, Homo Erectus. Uh, without them, we'd be so much less evolved. And here we are in, in our modern technology, advanced technology age, and we've got a lot of evolving to do. We, it's evolution, baby. So, climate change is real. That is not fake news. And we, we cannot cannot be the generations that history will look back upon and wonder why didn't they do everything humanly possible to solve this biggest of crises in our time. Anything can be obtainable. The Chicago Cubs winning the World Series This, this is proof, and I, 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 I use that analogy because, in regards to the climate change, because it, it can be done, but, but here's the thing, we don't have 108 years to wait. Um, I'm uh, lucky and grateful are two things I am every day, and uh, I'm just grateful to be alive. And, uh, and I also, I wanna publicly ap apologize, you know, all the, uh, you know, making our bandmates, making my bandmates suffer for the singer who was climbing on the rafters and hanging off of pipes and jumping off of balconies and, <laughs> they really, didn't deserve that, and um, but you know they, they didn't know that the person that they gave the job to that, that, that their singer was was really into evil can evil. But it was it was also the power of music. I, I swear I, I used to be able to like hold my whole body up with one finger, and but if you if the music wasn't playing, I couldn't do it with both hands. It's the power of rock and roll. One illustration. Uh, when, I th when I think about high altitudes, I th think about my wife, Jill. Uh, if you've ever, you know, a kite does not rise into the air unless someone is holding the string. Oh, 
shoot, honey, I thought you were sitting down in front. I... <laughs> but it's so important, you know, especially if that, if that kite gets way high in the air, you really have to trust the person holding the line. And that person has to be loyal and believe in you and then have the strength to reel you back. And so to my wife, Jill, I, I, I thank you. And I am looking forward to all our future days on the ground together. And, and I'm glad I get to hold the cord for you when you get to soar as you do. My two daughters, Olivia and Harper. Um, I try to teach them everything I know, and then they teach me the rest, uh, which there's more of that than, than what I do know. So uh, I'll get to you. And, and if, if somehow, some way, Chance the Rapper ever sees or hears this, I, I just want to tell him my daughter, Olivia, loves you. And we, uh, you have our highest approval, and I also, Chance, want to thank you for all the great work you're doing in Chicago. That's the kind of music activism that gives us all hope. So these three girls, I just can't tell you. I just love them more than anything. And that's a lot because it says a lot because I really love The Who. And the Ramones and the band and Fugazi and Iggy Pop and Slater Kinney and the Guided by Voices, and the, the list goes on because I've listened to music every day of my life for my whole life. And, uh, and, and a lot of that was in small apartments when I grew up. We lived in some tight spaces with my family. My mom's here, my brothers. My mom uh, never, some really good parenting. She, she wouldn't tell us to turn it down. She would just kind of end up being fans of the bands that we were playing very loudly. And uh, my brothers, who we grew up listening to all that music together, I always try to play our songs, our new songs to them first. So they're such a good barometer, and they've known me long enough, they know when I'm pulling some kind of bullshit. So they keep me honest and keep the records true. Jace, Mike, Chris, we miss you. Gina, I love you too. Um, you know how lucky I was to meet Jack Irons. I, w I was working in a club. There's Jackie right there. Uh, I'm working as a crew guy at a Joe Strummer gig at a little club in San Diego before my midnight shift. Uh, I get to meet Jack, who was the original drummer in the Chili Peppers. He also is a member of the Rock and Roll Hall of Fame already. He's here tonight. Without meeting him, none of this happens because I don't meet Jeff and Stone. I'm not in this building. I'm probably not even on the planet. I'm certainly not in the spot that I'm sitting down now or standing in now. Jack, thanks so much, and uh, thanks for your friendship, and, and you're a great drummer for our group. Some, somehow, um, somehow we were so fortunate that, you know, we, we had a few drummers. Uh, and, you know, taking that seat in the, the drum stool or the, the, the throne, because they were all kings. We were so fortunate, every one of them was great. We've got, uh, but Matt Cameron has really been the one that really kept us alive for this last 15, 16, 17 years. At a time when we didn't know if, we weren't sure what was gonna happen and he enabled us not just to survive but to thrive and, um, and he became one of our brothers and, and he was gonna end up receiving this accolade with either us or his other group, which are pretty damn good. <laughs> um, so he'll be back. Uh, we had the great Dave Abruzis. He was a great drummer. He is a great drummer. He's a great fucking drummer. And we wish him well. Matt Chamberlain, Jack, and, uh, and now Dave Cruzen, who we got to play with this week for the first time in 25 years. It's great to see him, he's a great person. Um, and speaking of Dave's, Dave Abrazis, Dave Cruzen, I really wanna thank Dave Letterman for uh, being part of our honor tonight. 
Uh, he doesn't know, but when I used to work a midnight shift, uh, I had four years midnight shifts, I'd get there at 11 to 7, and there was a small red TV, I was a security guard, there was a small red TV, and Dave was my co-pilot every weekday, every night I worked for four years. And, and uh, to have him be up here, we're so honored to be, uh, it's an honor to be honored by him. Um, and, and also, he did have so many great bands on his show that, that they, bands, I saw so many bands that later became influences the first time on, on the Letterman show. And, and I'm just going to tell you my side of that quick story. When, when I came into his uh, studio and, and took the mic and sang Black, he was doing that do 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 He was doing that every night for about three months. And I was always watching the show, and it was starting to make me fucking crazy. <laughs> and, and then it, got, it started getting weird. At one point, I remember I smoked a little something. I'm sitting there, end of the night. I'm kind of relaxing. And, and he kept asking, Paul, when, when is this band going to be on the show? When are they going to be on the show? He goes, I don't know. I haven't. Have you called him? I haven't. And he, start, this is, he starts looking in the TV. Now, I'm stoned to the bejesus. <laughs> and Dave Letterman, who was my co-pilot back in the security thing, he just looks into the camera, which is looking into my bedroom. Eddie. Eddie. Come here, Eddie. It was fucked up. I thought the TV was talking to me. I lost my mind. Seriously thought like, you know, you, got, you might have to go to, to rehab. <laughs> You're tripping balls right now. So, so lastly, we've been through a lot, this group, and, and uh, if it weren't for everybody out there who cared about our music, if it weren't for everybody out there who, who came to the shows and brought their energy, if it weren't for... Those were the things that really kept us together and we felt a responsibility to the music that was bigger than ourselves or, or whatever our own personal uh, needs of space or whatever. Well, we knew that we were better together than apart. And it was you that, that galvanized us and forged a brotherhood and a family. I love these people so much. And we love hanging out, and we love touring, we love playing, we love writing, we love recording. And I feel like maybe we're about halfway there to deserve something of this, this uh, uh, an accolade of this kind of stature, maybe halfway there. But this, this is very encouraging, and um, we're, we're very grateful. And thank you very, very much.